I have a question about the way you determine feeding rates. You say it only depends on the amount of water in the system compared to a DWC system, 60 to 100 grams per square meter per day. I get that. If you have a larger water amount, you initially need to feed more in order for the concentration of nutrients to get to the perfect level for the plants. However, shouldn't the feed input after the optimum point has been reached be scaled to the amount the plants will absorb? For example, if your plants take up nutrients of 60 grams of fish feed per day per square meter and you have two times the amount of water in your system compared to the standard DWC as explained in this video, you would need to feed your fish 120 grams of feed. This means supplying 60 grams of excessive nutrients to the system. Won't these nutrients build up over time? The School of Aquaponics. I wanted to answer this question because this is something that has been brought up a few times. One by a biscuit headed aquaponic grower and, other, and, and the other ones have been brought up just by other people like yourself who are just curious and just want to know how this thing is working. So the first thing that needs to be determined is that plant root uptake of nutrients is determined by the concentration of nutrients in a solution. It's not by the total amount of nutrients. This is one thing that people are not understanding for some reason. So we're gonna clear this up real quick. Let's go ahead and bring out the facts so we can just clear it all up and then we can move forward. Page 31 of Mineral Nutrition. The relationship between the rate of influx or uptake of an ion and its concentration in solution can usually be described by Michaelis Mentis Kinetics. This is a formula that's discussing the rate of uptake of nutrients. That's what the ions are. The, your nitrates, your uh, uh, potassium, your phosphorus, all those are the ions. And there's a relationship between how plants take those up and the concentration and how concentrated they are in the solution. Let's find out what the definition of concentration is real quick so we can get it clear. Because when you read this book, you'll find out that everything that has to do with nutrients is dependent upon a concentration whether it's nutrient uptake through the xylem through the phloem whether it's nutrients being uh, uh, supplied in the vacuoles of the uh, plant cells all of it has to do with nutrient concentration so let's understand what concentration means so we can move forward page 184 the central science scientists use the term concentration to designate the amount of solute dissolved in a given quantity of solvent or quantity of solution. The solute in this case are the nutrients or the ions being dissolved inside of the solvent, which is the water. So the amount of nutrients that are being dissolved in the water, that's giving the concentration. The greater the amount of solute dissolved in a certain amount of solvent, the more concentrated the resulting solution. So the more nutrients you add into a given amount of water is going to determine how concentrated the nutrients are. So if we keep the water amount steady, but we increase the nutrient input, then it's gonna be more concentrated and vice versa. If we increase the solvent or the water amount, but we keep the nutrients the same, then it's going to decrease the amount of concentration inside of the solution. So now we're clear on what concentration is. We can go back to the Michaelis Menden kinetics. And here's a graph that's showing you the relationship between root uptake of nutrients and the external concentration of the nutrients. And you will see that as nutrient con uh, content increases, the amount of ions uh, per volume of water or per whatever substance it is, as that increases, also the rate of uptake increases as well. As you lower the concentration, less nutrients per volume of water, guess what? The nutrient uptake also decreases as well. And there's a threshold, there's a limit to the amount of nutrient concentration that can be present in the solution before the plants have problems taking it up, before they can't take it up in uh, uh, sufficient quantities. Pay attention, page 32, mineral nutrition. Thus, under optimal conditions in which a constant nutrient supply is maintained, meaning in aquaponics, that's one of them, we maintain nutrient concentrations. If you have a set feeding rate and you know what you're putting in the system, you can maintain a constant supply of nutrients and you can reap the benefits that we're about to uh, hear coming up next. 
Only very low concentrations of nutrients are required in the external solution for maximal plant growth. Woo, you hear that? The key word, low concentrations, not total amount of nutrients. Concentrations. You can expect this if you supply nutrients uh, constantly um, uh, in, uh, to plants. They don't need the uh, typical required amount of nutrients as they do in soil. This won't work for soil. Soil doesn't have constant nutrient supply like this. And the book talks about this in here as well. So it doesn't have that. So can we find out what the low concentration uh, for aquaponics is? Can we figure that out? Can we find out the, the low end of the uh, spectrum for the parts per million or milligrams per liter that we can supply in aquaponics? Yes, we can. Let's go to the next resource, Recirculating Aquaculture, page 691. In an aquaponic system, considerably lower levels of total dissolved solids, 200 to 400 milligrams per liter, will produce good results because nutrients are generated continuously. They're generated how? Continuously. This is the same thing we just read in the other book, how nutrients can be supplied at low concentrations when they are supplied continuously. And 200 to 400 milligrams per liter, this is low concentrations in comparison to other growing methods like hydroponics, where the nutrient concentration is 1,000 1, to 1,800 parts per million, um, they're growing plants in their solution. So these are this is relatively low concentrations. And here is the kicker. You know there's a kicker. The kicker is the UVI research methods, the 60 uh, grams uh, per square meter of growing area per day supplied to the, um, the, the, the system, that is going to put you in this low range right here, the 200 to 400 milligrams per liter, which is the bare minimum. This is the bare minimum that you can get away with to grow plants in aquaponics. The bare minimum. You go any lower than this, you're not going to be growing vegetables. I can tell you that, or they're going to have a significant amount of deficiencies. So another thing that people have to remember is as you're putting feed in the system, plants are taking it out. It's not just you accumulate up to a certain concentration and then that's it. It's all, you can just add whatever you want to. So one of the objectives in the UVI research was to determine how much feed input can go into a system to supply the plants with enough nutrients and also to avoid the plants taking up the nutrients in excess and not having anything left in the system and then causing nutrient deficiencies. So there needed to be a balance. You have to put this much amount of feed in to compensate for the rate that the plants are removing it. And the optimum feeding rate is enough to maintain that balance, not too much and not too little. It's enough to provide a balance between nutrient input and nutrient uptake. Here's the proof. Page 687, Recirculating Aquaculture. The optimum ratio of daily fish feed input to plant growing area will maximize plant production while maintaining relatively stable levels of dissolved nutrients. You hear that? What's the key word? Maintaining, maintaining. It's maintaining a relatively stable nutrient, uh, dissolved nutrient concentration. So that means the input is matching the output and it's staying stable. The nutrient concentration is staying stable. So if we fluctuate the water amount, if we change the water amount, as you were suggesting, increase the water amount and keep the nutrient concentrate or the nutrient input the same, 60 grams per square meter, but double the water volume, it's going to dilute the nutrient concentration. Let's get some more proof. So we can use a dilution calculator to figure this out. So we're going to use a hypothetical system. Let's say we have a thousand gallon system. Let's type this in. Let's say we have a thousand gallon system and we're feeding at 60 grams per square meter of growing area per day, and that is giving us 200 parts per million. We're on the lower end of this, uh, the spectrum. We're at the bare minimum, and we're still growing fine, though, uh, because this is the low concentration because it's supplied continuously. So we have this um, 200 milligrams per liter. I mean, we have 1,000 gallons. My prediction, my prediction was well, not really a prediction because I know the answer already, but We'll pretend that it's a prediction, but my prediction would be if we increase the water volume, but we do not increase the nutrient constant, the nutrient input, we that stays constant, 60 grams per square meter. If we keep that the same, but we increase the, uh, the, the water volume, it's going to decrease the nutrient concentration. So if we double 
um, if we uh, double or uh, increase the amount of water volume by 100%, then the dilution is going to uh, decrease or the concentration is going to decrease by 100% as well. Let's figure it out. So let's say we have, I'm, I'm predicting 100. I'm predicting it's going to dilute to 100 uh, milligrams per liter and that this is going to give us 2,000 gallons of water. Bam. Look at that. So if we keep the same, th this is just the way it is. If we keep it the same, all the input uh, 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 constant, but we change the water volume, it's going to dilute the solution. And that is where you're going to be at. And you, at 100 milligrams per liter, you're not growing vegetables. You're growing uh, duckweed now and uh, algae. That's what you're growing. Because this is too low of a concentration to grow plants. So you can have fun growing duckweed and uh, uh, phytoplankton and things of that nature, but you're not growing uh, vegetables with, this, with these concentrations here. So hopefully we've cleared this up and got everything squared away. Now we understand how plants take up nutrients. It's dependent upon the concentration of the solution, the water volume and the feed input, the nutrient input that is going in the system. If you just, uh, you, you can't increase the water volume and not increase the feed input and, and just expect the nutrient concentration to be the same and the plants to be in the same environment. It does not work that way. You have to create a balance, which is what the feeding ratios that the UVI um, has developed. This is what it, it does. It creates a balance. So I know there's still some biscuit headed growers out there who are going to say, well, if I decrease or if I increase the water volume, I can still grow plants. Of course, you're still going to be able to grow some. You're still going to be able to grow some plants. If we have 100 parts per million, you there's still going to be nutrients like nitrate that may be uh, uh, in quantities where the plant can grow. But you're going to have nutrient deficiencies that would not normally be there if you had two, three, four hundred parts per million. So the plant is still going to grow, but it's not going to grow the way it's supposed to grow if you had the correct concentration. And instead of being deficient in three of the nutrients out of the uh, out of the thirteen. Um, you're going to be deficient in five, six, seven nutrients, but the plant is still going to be looking like it's growing, but with just more deficiencies. So let's clear that up as well, because there's always one or two that, that are going to come behind that type of uh, uh, ideology. And all I'm going to say is you don't have to listen at all. Woo!